<laughs> All right, new this morning. After working, learning, and staying at home for months, space indoors and outdoors became a prime driver for many people who were looking for a new home. The problem is there's not much inventory. Some homes come off the market in just hours, and the pandemic caused a secondary shortage for those looking to build. So many factors contribute to the Cincinnati Metro housing boom. The main driver, supply, or more accurately, a lack thereof. We underbuilt in the housing industry for many, many, many years. By our calculations, we are underbuilt nationally by about 3.8 million homes. This market has definitely been very challenging. Dave Van Gasset is a real estate agent working in downtown Cincinnati, but his clients buy and sell all over the market. His advice? For those who are looking to get into purchasing a home, I would say if you see a home, we need to go look at it the same day, if not minutes it being on the market because we may lose it. Gasset sees another trend driving the inventory down further. You have those who can afford more who are going in and buying the homes that are a little less and putting more down. In Loveland at Dries Homes, Elliott Farms, once again, demand outpaces supply. If you think about the pandemic, it was like a boa constrictor squeezing the supply of inventory. So it, from two sides. Even with 700 lots available to build and 90 spec homes in the tri-state area, Dries' inventory is down a third from last year. When that demand came, uh, it really depleted the inventory. And then combined with that, the supply chain issues is elongating the replenishment cycle. Chief Financial Officer Tim Terrell says sales went up starting in July, which was a nice rebound from the pandemic slowdown. Some of that comes from Cincinnati's affordability. What we're seeing is there is a migration away from high cost coastal cities towards affordability and quality of life. And if anything, Cincinnati, I think, has several of those in spades. George Ratu is a senior economist with Realtor.com. Their data shows our market gets about 25% of buyers coming from other areas with higher costs of living. And the tri-state also has a strong employment base. The unemployment rate is lower than the national for the metropolitan area. So on balance, for particularly young families, it's a very attractive market. Both Ratu and Terrell see the demand continuing, that we're not necessarily in a pandemic bubble of skyrocketing sales, or that demand will dwindle. Healthy, but I do uh, see price uh, appreciation moderating in in 2021 a, a bit. It's 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 outpacing incomes, which at some point becomes unsustainable. So I believe we're not going to sustain at this 60% growth level for sure. But do I believe that we can continue to put out eight, nine hundred thousand units uh, of new homes per year? Absolutely. There are some pockets where it may be easier to find a home without building like Anderson Township, Walnut Hills, or Covington, which all have more inventory available than, say, Taylor Mill or Westwood. But regardless of the neighborhood... If you're serious about the home, you love it, then you need to put your best foot forward. Well, something else to keep in mind. Economists told us it has been cheaper to buy than rent in the tri-state this year. And right now, Cincinnati is number one in the country for median rental prices for two-bedroom apartments, which is something else that is driving up the housing market.